Hey guys, and welcome to this video. Today, we will look at the network programming for Escape from Tarkov, how the game works after you input some commands, such as moving your character, shooting, or looting. We will have a look at desynchronization, lag, and what your ping does. I hope that some of you find it enlightening enough to be better prepared for future high ping debates. Speaking of enlightening, today's video is not sponsored by Elgato Keylight. But of course, it is streamers' number one choice for making them shine, look good and pretty on stream. Because I do not own one, I can't show you. But you will now watch this 4 hour long video that looks at every key aspect of the light. Just kidding. Let's go back to the video. In Escape from Tarkov, we have dedicated servers that we can connect to in order for us to play the game. The first important thing you need to know is that the server has the authority. That means that everything you do in game or every other player does must be approved by the server. So if you want to move, you would have to send this movement request to the server and await the confirmation. Once received, your character starts moving. Because the game developers don't want you to wait because based on your connection to the server, this could take from a few milliseconds up to several seconds, your client already simulates this locally. This is the so-called client prediction. So your character moves as soon as you press W and sends the information to the server. The server runs the same simulation and if everything is fine, sends the client an OK, approved, back. There are instances where the server disagrees with the client and although you already move locally, will snap back to your original or last approved position from the server. This can be due to other objects such as players in your way, packet loss or other things that can be seen as rubber banding. Before we talk about the next big thing, we need to understand how the server and client are communicating. In order to send and receive information, the data packages need to go through different layers. Many of you probably heard of the OZ model. We will briefly look at more, a more simplified version as only one layer should be of our concern for now. At the very bottom, we have our physical layer, which would be the cables an example. On top of that, we have the data link which would be your local network or Ethernet. Then comes the network layer with IPv4 and IPv6, and on top of that is the transport layer utilizing different protocols, and finally the application layer. The protocols used within the transport layer are what we need to go through. BSG uses UDP as transport protocol that does not take care if packets sent are received. This makes it fast enough for multiplayer games. When your client sends movement packets to the server, the server will intake them and send them back with agreed or disagreed, as we've already learned. Let's assume packet 2 is lost on its way, which is a normal event that happens ever so often due to the nature of the internet. The server only receives packet 1 and 3, but he knows that packet 2 got lost. So he runs the simulation for 1 and 3 and concludes that it's okay. Then sends back the agreed state for 1 and 3. On the client side, the player would not notice that such an event occurred. TCP, however, would make sure all packets sent arrive and arrive in the order they were sent. If one packet was missing, the server would wait for this packet before it sends the agreed or disagreed state back to the client. This would cause extra loops on the server, increasing the time of communication between it and the client. The next topic we need to tackle is desynchronization or desync. As we've learned, the server has the authority over all the actions, but your client predicts what could happen before it receives confirmation. Although this gives you a very smooth user experience, you are already out of sync with everything until you get a new state from the server, for you and the entire game. You usually won't notice this desync because of the client prediction and the modern connection speed being very fast. However, there are multiple reasons you might. If too many packets are dropped or lost, an example, and this can occur server side as well, your client's state is so out of sync that you won't be able to pick up any loot, you won't see other players, even if they are standing right next to you. If your connection speed is too slow, that means your round trip time or ping your client might become so desynced that the previous events happen as well. There are more factors that can get your client in a desynced state. However, the important thing is, it happens in all games. The fine-tuning of the netcode, as many would say, 
can resolve a lot in terms of user experience, but the two things developers can't control is the internet and your own PC power. So they have to accommodate a lot of different users from the location to PCs and internet connections. Of course, the power of the server in terms of CPU, RAM, etc., and the way it processes information, meaning its code, or runs simulations is something they can, but as I said, it's not the only factors. Let's dive into the RTT or ping topic for a moment. Most people will try to connect to their nearest server possible. The distance will be short enough for them to have a ping around 30 to 90. Some people will want to play with their friends from other regions or continents and go beyond that with a ping of around 130 to 250. A ping of 1000 means one second. So if I play with 1000 ping, the game will literally become unplayable because not only will I constantly be one second behind, but stack them until I am so out of sync that my connection to the server is most likely dropped. So a ping of 150 will be 0.15 seconds. That is actually quite fast. However, it will still affect the game. In fact, it can affect games massively. Let's take a look at this example. If my ping was not 150 milliseconds, but 150 minutes, and another player had a ping of 30 minutes, it should become very clear. If the player shoots me, he will most likely get confirmation of the kill after 30 minutes, while I would wait another 120 minutes to receive a notification of my death. So in this case, a high ping would be absolutely horrible. In addition, even if I moved around locally, the server would not send me any confirmation before 150 minutes have passed, meaning the 30 minute ping player would see me standing in one spot for quite some time. But of course with these times, any game would be unplayable. So why would a ping of 0.15 seconds still affect other people's experience? The answer lies within the server that will try to keep all clients in the same updated state for the game. While the game will try to interpolate players' positions to make the experience smooth, it also means that the other clients do not necessarily see the truth. So a high ping player might be standing in front of a tree while he is behind it on his screen and the other way around. So his hitbox on some, on some occasions might be shootable while on others is not. This is a form of desync that is often connected to high ping. As we now know that the server tries to keep all clients in a synced state, we can see the difficulties with clients connecting to it, each with a different connection speed. The slowest client therefore would dictate the state of the game. But again, it is not as simple as that, since we know the server would drop a high ping client at some point, packets get lost, etc. And that is one of the key points often mentioned when devs talk about high ping players affecting the entire game. For now, we are through with the basic introduction to how Escape from Tarkov functions from a network perspective. We can conclude it by saying that high ping is not a guarantee for any advantage over low ping players, quite the opposite. Let me know if this helped you, if you need more detailed information and what your experiences are so far. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.